This is the iPhone 10 launched in 2017 and this is the OnePlus 5T launched in the same year. And this is the iPhone XS that was released in 2018 and this is OnePlus 60 that was released in the same calendar. So now in 2019, this is again iPhone 11 Pro and this is OnePlus 7 Pro. As you can see, there is something different how these two companies work and innovate. And frankly, Apple doesn't seem to bring much on the table, yet making huge profits. There are two major problems with Apple. The first is their sneaky business strategy, and the second, its innovation paradox. First, let's go way back in time to track how they adopted their business strategy. There is a centennial light bulb in Livermore, California, which has been burning since 1901. The light bulb was manufactured in the 1890s by the Shelby Electric Company and hangs still in the Livermore Fire Department. So the incandescent bulbs manufactured by the Shelby Electric were built to last as long as possible. And there are supposedly others out there still working to this day. The bulb's longevity is attributed to a dedicated power supply, low voltage and continuously being left on. Today, incandescent bulbs typically last 1000 hours or so, a far cry from the million hours or so that the centennial bulb has burned. LEDs are significantly better, typically lasts up to 50,000 hours or about 10 years of lifespan but notably more expensive. So how is that a century of technological advance has done so little to improve the light bulb? In 1924, all of the big light bulb manufacturers, including General Electric, Philips and Associated Electric Industries, met to establish the Phoebus Cartel, the first group to implement the practice of plant obsolescence. The cartel grew out of collusion between a few of these industry giants before the companies realized they needed to ensure all light bulb manufacturers ascribe it to their conspiracy. Eventually, everyone signed on, territories were drawn for each company demarcating where light bulbs could be sold, and this plan was made to tightly manipulate the market to their benefit. All companies involved had to limit the lifespan of their bulbs to 1000 hours compared to the previous 2500 hours standard. This forced consumers to buy light bulbs much more often than they once had. Today, plant obsolescence has numerous definitions and takes many forms. For example, over the ages, automakers have perfected the art of instilling plant obsolescence in their cars. The level of competition is on the rise and newer technologies, innovation and new engineering techniques can produce cars that will last a lifetime. Manufacturers must be careful not to design themselves to oblivion. For if consumers catch on to your sneaky manipulative strategies, they might find themselves without any customers. So what do they do? They design smarter and hide their strategies in plain view. These are two strategies to manipulate us consumers into buying more. And the first one is constantly restyling. This is where the companies have the consumers totally manipulated. For example, in the car business, they will sell you a certain year's model and tell you how good it is, its features and all. Then in six months, they redesign the same car to look slightly better, have better interior, have a little more features and even tweak the engine a bit. As a buyer, in this hyper-consumeristic day and age and the rise of social media, your old car is no longer fashionable and hence you develop a need, a desire to own the newer model. The best part is, technology has made it the seemingly complicated systems and components get better, smaller and cheaper as time passes. That is planned obsolescence to make your product unfashionable and undesirable. The second strategy is to make spare parts rare and expensive. For example, you wake up one day and decide to take your car to dealership for seemingly simple repair, only to be told that spare part you want is no longer in stock and the manufacturer sees its production indefinitely, or that spare part is expensive as a new car. The implicit message they hope you received is that planning for a new car may be better, cheaper option than buying expensive parts. So, a couple of years ago, Apple has confirmed that it does deliberately slow down the older iPhones and says it's doing so to prevent the devices from shutting down because of aging batteries. Apple said old working batteries can't handle processing demands of software updates at the same capacity, which causes the phone to shut down unexpectedly and phones work a little more slowly. This makes sense, but I don't personally buy the story. Apple is the only giant company that purposefully tries to prevent third-party repair shops from fixing Apple products and even taking legal actions against people who fix Apple devices. If they truly did care about preserving the batteries, they would have authorized plenty 
community of repair shops rather than centralizing it to themselves, making it even harder and inaccessible. Moreover, the software is something that can be tweaked and designed for a specific phone, even if it's very old. Additionally, Apple is using proprietary 5-point security screws in the iPhones and MacBooks. The special pentalobular screws were first used in the 2009 MacBook Pro to stop users from replacing the batteries themselves. The screws are unique to Apple and created by Apple and serve one purpose only to keep users out. Apple is the only company that started to integrate and glue down the battery to the phone, with the only purpose of making it even harder for a regular customer to change the battery and components. This makes customers increasingly reliant on Apple for expensive repairs and upgrades. For example, the retail price of iPhone X battery is around $25 and costs Apple $6. But if you go to the Apple Store to replace it, they will charge $69 and it takes one week. And if you have any accidental damage like home button or minor cracks in the back panel, regardless of the damage, they will charge you $550 if you don't buy an Apple Care. These tactics are to force customers to upgrade their gadgets sooner than necessary. After they have been busted slowing down the iPhones, Apple run a discounted battery replacement program to allow users to replace batteries for just $29. And it turns out, even from the discounted price, Apple has benefited massively from this program. The company replaced over 11 million batteries in 2018 and made almost $300 million in profit from this program. Apple was hit with a fine of 10 million euros in Italy because of not telling consumers that software updates might slow down and throttle the iPhone 6 and 6s, even though these models were not considered old. And in France, it's under investigation for plant obsolescence, with the same premise what Phoebus Cartel did with the light bulbs. As I have mentioned earlier about the changes in iPhones and OnePlus devices, it might seem like Apple is fighting against plant obsolescence and OnePlus is doing the otherwise. But in reality, there is a difference between a true innovation and pseudo-functional obsolescence. Pseudo-functional obsolescence is a form of plant obsolescence which appears to introduce innovative changes into a product, but in reality it does not. In fact, pseudo-functional obsolescence often forcibly outmodes an otherwise useful product. For example, let's look at the iPhone X and XS. Virtually every component is the same, network, body sizes, display, memory, camera, and the biggest change in general is that there is a minor modification in the processor, XS having a bit stronger chipset and weaker battery. In fact, when it's tested, iPhone X had 74 hour endurance rating, while XS had 72 hours, making the processor upgrade useless. When iPhone XS was released, Apple stopped the production and removed from its website otherwise cheaper iPhone X. And when iPhone 11 Pro was released, they removed cheaper model XS and XS Maxes. Funny enough, they have kept iPhone 8, which was released back in 2017. This is the perfect example of Apple's pseudo-functional obsolescence. There is no innovation, no engineering reason why one should switch from X to XS or even 11 Pro. What is left is pseudo functional obsolescence that costs consumers money. Now let's look at the innovation on the other end of the spectrum. OnePlus 5T and OnePlus 6T were released at the same dates as iPhone X and XS respectively. As you can see, there is a huge difference between these two phones. OnePlus 6T having the in-display fingerprint sensor and completely different design, and overall, it's a completely different phone. The second problem of Apple is its innovation paradox. Back in 2011, this was Xbox Kinetic Sensor, one of the most secure face IDs of its time. Apple did shrink this to this. You gotta give it to Apple, they did an amazing job with the face ID. But Apple has become the victim of its own success. It has become a trillion dollar blue chip company. Well, blue chip stocks are huge companies with an excellent reputation and very strong brand power. These are typically large, well established and financially sound companies that have dependable earnings, often paying dividends to its investors. It's not that Apple is not innovating, they have everything, skills, talents and stuff. They don't have to produce as many transformative and market disrupting products and services because they are too successful to take outrageous chances. For example, the true cost of iPhone X is $370. With labor, logistics, tariffs and marketing, it goes to maximum $450. They sold 64GB iPhone X for $1000 in the US. 
and around 1100 and 1300 worldwide depending on the country. That's around 57 to 70 percent profit margin from the single iPhone 10. Well, Apple's job is to stretch this profit margin as long as possible. And the only way to do this is to roll out the same product with little to no improvements with fancier names to their processors and displays every year until there's an uproar or a significant dip in sales. From an investor's perspective, this lack of innovation is understandable and profitable. Because Apple is blue chip with thousands of shareholders to take care of, and they have to make money. This explains why newcomers like OnePlus, which is a startup company, needs to innovate constantly just to survive in the market. At this point, the only answer where this Apple innovation paradox came from is that Apple chose to make investors and shareholders happy over their customers. It's the greed and money-grabbing attitude of Apple to its loyal customers who are locked in in the Apple ecosystem. Apple announced for the first time that the iPhone sales figures will no longer be public. It's a big deal as it is by far the firm's most popular and most profitable product. iPhone sales declined 15% in the first quarter of 2019, and iPhone 11 Pro release will reflect in the first quarter of 2020. It seems like Apple reached a cap in its business strategy and must transition to a more flexible approach which is a subscription model. Apple services never really were a company's main strategy, the main purpose seems to be making the Apple ecosystem richer and more addictive. The reason why Apple users like the ecosystem is not a secret. Easy synchronization between all Apple devices, messages, video calls, music are easily accessible within Apple devices. If you want to buy an Android, your data won't synchronize with your Apple, no more easy file sending, casting your display on your Apple TV, everything will push you back to the ecosystem. And Apple made it sure that you are technologically isolated and comfortable within its huge ecosystem walls. The more you drown yourself in by feeding in more devices and services, the less you are able to leave it. Apple ecosystem is sticky and this ecosystem strongly powered and enhanced by ever-growing Apple services, which is even harder for a person to leave. The most important of all, consumer education is a relatively easy way to resist Apple's pseudo-functional obsolescence and its money-grabbing greedy practices. The goal of consumer education is simply to make consumers like you and me aware that pseudo-functional obsolescence actually exists. It's not only Apple, but other giant companies also built their businesses around this concept. As we are living in a hyper-consumeristic day and age, it's imperative to know how these companies actually work before we purchase anything, whether it's a mobile phone, a car, a house, or anything. Well, thanks for watching. Please support this channel on Patreon. It will help to increase the quality in the video production. And frankly, my current setup has smaller RAM than flagship phones of 2019. So your support on Patreon would mean a lot. The next video is an interesting one. Please subscribe not to miss upcoming episodes and hit the like button if you liked the video.